Emerald Link is built on a Wi-Fi 7 outdoor bridge paired with grid parabolic antenna. Hey tech lovers, welcome back to Fast Cabling. Now imagine this, a storm rolls in overnight and you're the operator in this harbor's office. Eight kilometers that way on a remote island, that's a dock you're responsible for. No fiber, no copper, just wind, salt spray, and decision you need to make fast. That's the problem that our client's facing. So today, we're going to light up that island with cameras and wireless access point using a point-to-point -point wireless bridge. No underwater or underground cable, no monthly satellite bills, and no guesswork. So let's get to the island from right here. Underwater or underground cabling across 8 kilometers sounds sturdy until you price it, permit it, and plan for repairs after the big storm. Salt, wind, corrosion, shifting seabed is a maintenance story you don't want to start. On top of that, distance means signal loss and latency. So you can't just throw consumer gear in it and hope and the smarter path is to beam a private link from here to there using point-to-point -point wireless bridge. So think of it as invisible Ethernet cable stretched through the air using two focus radio with high gain antennas and each acts like a transparent network port so your cameras, access point and switches will treat it just like a wire. So our link is built on a Wi-Fi 7 outdoor bridge paired with grid parabolic antenna. Wi-Fi 7 brings wide channels, multi-link operation, and smarter scheduling. That means more throughput, lower jitter, and a steadier experience over long distances. And with the high gain parabolic antenna, the Wi-Fi 7 outdoor bridge delivers exceptional speed and stability in harsh weather. The grid antenna allows air to pass through its open mesh design, greatly reducing wind load and minimizing movement or signal disruption during storms or in exposed outdoor areas. And with up to 2.3 gigabit per second throughput and a range of up to 10 kilometers. It's ideal for remote sites, seaside camps, mariners, offshore platforms, and more. And before you post anything to a poll, you should do a line of sight analysis. First, confirm you can place each antenna high enough to a clear terrain or cranes. Second, pick sturdy mounting points towel, building, or a well-engineered pole so our antenna won't wobble in the wind. Make sure you have clear line of sights between them and that's half the battle. And now, let's make this work. So let's start here at the harbor's office. Here we're using a WebSmart PoE switch and a network video recorder that's already connected to a big screen monitor. I'm going to use a short patch cord to connect the switch to the NVR to display video. And to power up our bridge, we are using PoE, sending both power and data through a single ethernet cable. That's power over ethernet. And our bridge also accepts 12 volt DC input. Next, we are going to make the alignment. We move slowly, one axis at a time, and then tighten after every small improvement. Over tighten too early and you hunt back and forth. And you should finish by weather sealing every exterior connector and a drip loop on the cable so water fall away from the gland. And this bridge is IP67 outdoor rated, so it's perfect for outdoor harsh environment. Now make sure it has a clear line of sight between our bridges. On the island side, we're going to repeat the process. Less movement equals steadier modulation equals more throughput. And we're also using power over Ethernet, so let me plug in the Ethernet cable first. This is going to connect to our outdoor PoE switch. Now this is also an IP67 waterproof rated outdoor switch. And we are going to plug in all our devices. We have two bullet cameras one wireless SS point 
and our wireless bridge on the pole. So now they're all getting both power and data. And if you have power constraint on the island, a compact solar gate works well. You just need panel, controller, and battery size for night and cloudy days, and DC feed to our outdoor switch. Now we're seeing all our devices are getting power and data. And if you are in a lightning prone area, you should also add a surge protector. This is a cheap insurance. But you're not seeing any video feed. Why? With hardware secure, we also need to config. We have to set one radio as SS point or master and the other as station or clients so they can lock exclusive to each other. I already set the island bridge as a client bridge. So next, I'm going to show you how to set our wireless bridge at the harbor office as master bridge. So now we have our computer ready. Make sure you connect your computer directly to the switch, which we can have access to our wireless bridge. Let's begin. First, we have to make sure they're under the same subnet. I'm going to turn off my Wi-Fi. And let's see. So they are, because it says connected. Now go on a web browser, type in our, here we go, the wireless bridge IP address. Then we can log into it. So now you can see the status, they're not connected. We have to go to wireless first. On both sides, we match the SSID channel with encryption. Now we're setting this bridge to SS point. So click on SS point and click standard Wi-Fi because this is a point to point setup. We can see the SSID. And for security, we enable strong encryption and unique keys. Treat this like a private backhaul because it is. Then here we can see the output power. To keep the link clean, we have to turn the transmit power high enough for robust NF SNR. But for indoor tests, let's use 10 because too much power can actually make things worse by creating self noise. And here we go. And this is where you pick mode, channels, and width. Now, we start with a moderate channel width because wider gives more throughput, but it can be more sensitive to interference and will widen only if the noise floor allows. So let's pick the default one here, then your country code and etc. So now we're done. Let's hit save and apply. So we already set it to SS point. Next, I'm going to show you on network. Now on network, we can set a static IP address for the bridge so we can reach them for maintenance. But you can also choose DHCP. But if you choose pick DHCP, make sure you download a dedicated software to check for the IP address later. Now, this bridge also allows us to set VLAN by clicking here. So just hit save and apply. Here we go. So now we can see our monitor are getting live video feed because this one is already an SS point. And there's one more thing I want to share with you is the spectrum analysis. Now, over water, reflection can create mounted path and ships brings noisy electronics. So we can watch the spectrum analysis for existing charts and we can pick a cleaner channel. As you can see over here is so red. I mean, this channel is very busy and up here, it's almost free, so we can pick higher channel, but keep in mind, because some country do have restriction or in 6,000 or more. So you have to check it before you pick this channel here. Now, if you want to keep things organized, a VLAN sure helps. Virtual lens creates network segmentation. It's like painting links on a highway, so trucks and scooters don't tangle. We can make two links. 
cameras, and Wi-Fi. And make sure you need to set the port on the switches to the bridge to trunk port, so you can carry all the VLANs each typed across the air. Also, video doesn't like surprises. We can turn on quality of service so camera streams get priority. So here we go, cameras up, Wi-Fi up, no cables, and latency low enough that life actually feels live. So our client's harbor office sees the island like it's plugged in next door. This is the power of a proper point-to-point -point bridge with a clear line of sight, thoughtful mounting, tidy config, and a little network discipline with VLANs and QoS. If you do those well, and you can turn a hostile environment into a calm, predictable link. Now, if you want us to tackle your layout, feel free to drop your site's detail in the comment section below. Thank you very much for joining us, and I'll see you in our next one.